Welcome to church. How many of you here are excited for today? Parang hindi ah. Sino di excited ka today? We're kind of jump back right now. Uh, we just want to say thank you. If this is your first time, hindi ko na po papatasin yung mga kamay ninyo. Sobrang grateful po kami na makasama po namin kayo dito. And hoping this will not be the last time na makikita namin kayo dito. Like what Gian said a while ago, we want you to be part of our church community and we want to journey with you in this walk of faith that you have. And for those people tuning online, magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. I'm Christian. I'm one of the pastors here. And uh, every Sunday, sobra excited po ako na mag-share ng Word ni God because I really believe that there's power in the Word of God. And as we start, uh, yung pong uh, Word natin for today, uh, bago po tayo mag-start doon, let me just share to you, to everyone, what had happened last week. Uh, last, uh, <laughs> so basically, <ako> nakakagad eh. <laughs> just, just last week, nagkaroon po tayo ng ating tinatawag na youth camp. At ang mga campers po natin nandito, I was given an opportunity to be with them second day to third day. I was so blessed. Grabe lang po yung puso ng mga kabataan natin. They're worshiping God, honoring God, having a fervent heart, and even a fervent spirit just for them to know who God is. I hope sa lahat po ng magulang dito, hindi po tayo susuko sa next generation. Kundi i-guide po natin ang next generation. And we just want to say thank you sa lahat po ng sumuporta sa ating youth camp. Remember back then we had a tinatawag po natin uh, fundraising. Lahat po ng bumili ng cookies, bumili ng sticker, bumili ng kung ano-ano. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you for sending our youth uh, dun po sa ating fervent camp. Maraming maraming salamat po. Grabe lang po talaga yung impact. Even po ako... Um, Na, mangyak-yak ako eh no, mga moment na we're, we're trying to minister to our, to, our, to our youth grabe lang po si Lord mag-work and hoping sa lahat po na hindi nakasama ng youth camp next year ako pa nag-announce no? next year mapapakumit kayo hindi ako sigurado kung meron next year pero hoping next time hindi pala next year makasama po natin yung iba po mong youth na talagang uh, magiging excited sa mga activities ng ng uh, youth natin. And don't forget din po, if ever hindi po sila kasama, huwag niyo pong kalimutan na meron po tayong youth service every Saturday at 4 p.m. Dito rin po sa dito rin po siya ginaga, ginagawa. Uh, ito po kakaiba po lang doon. Uh, almost the same naman siya. Ang kakaiba lang, iba lang po talaga adrenaline nila. Nagtatalunan at uh, mahirap na sumabay. Pero isa lang yung nakita ko. Lahat sila sama-sama nagpupuri sa Panginoon. And um, ang dami ko na nasabi. Oh, tapos na po ako. And also, today is our fifth week of our series, Even in the Impossible. This will be the second to the last installment of our series. And uh, the reason why we have this series is because we want everyone to understand that the God that we are serving is a God of possibilities. Even for us, it seems so impossible, but in the name of Jesus, everything is possible. That's why if we're going to try to look at yung mga previous topics natin, ito po yung mga different stories in the Bibles, in the Bible on how God uh, on how God um, minister and also perform signs and wonders and we really believe na until now God can do miracles. That's why even for this year ang theme po natin, something that we are keep on uh, casting that vision to everyone. We want you to believe for a miracle or miracles. Sino dito, alam mo matatapos na ang July, onting months na lang, magiging ano na, magiging 2024 na pero naniniwala ka parating pa rin ang miracle sa buhay mo. Kaya po ina- inaanyayahan ko po ang bawat sa to magsitayo po tayo as we read the word of God. The reason why we're standing because we really want to uh, take this time to honor and ev- also in reverence of God, God's Word. If this is your first time, meron po tayo malaking screen dito so that you can follow us. Uh, if you're coming here for the past how many weeks, I hope nakapag-download na po kayo ng sarili po ninyong Bible. It says here, in Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25, it says here, One day, he got into the boat with his disciples. And he said to them, let us go across the other side of the lake. So they set out and they sailed. He fell asleep 
And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with waters and were in danger. And they went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he, wo- he, and he awoke and rebuked the wind and raging waves, and they ceased. And there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and they were marveled, saying to one another, Who then is this, that he commands even winds and water, and they obey him? Let's just pray. Lord, we just want to say thank you for this time that you've given us, for us to study your word. I pray that you will just illuminate your word. I pray that you will use my mouth to speak life and encouragement. And I'm really excited, God, on how you will uh, anoint the preaching of your word and how you will soften our hearts to receive new things from you, God. Lord, we bless your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may take your seats. The particular passage po na binasa natin a while ago, it's all about Jesus, Jesus comes to calm the storm. Ito po yung time we're in um, background neto after Jesus was teaching a lot of things to his disciples. Ito yung time we're in, nagkaroon din po siya ng opportunity to command something to the disciple. Ano po tong command niya sa, 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 sa mga disciple? Ang story po kasi neto is something like, uh, sa, ano po to, Jesus, uh, synoptic. Gospel. Pag sinabi po natin synoptic gospel, ang synoptic gospel po, makikita po natin sa three gospel account. We're in, nasa Matthew, Mark, and Luke siya. Pag nasa Matthew, Mark, and Luke siya, ito po yung mga accounts na makikita po natin na same story na binabanggit ni Luke, same story na binabanggit ni Mark, at same story na binabanggit sa Matthew. So pare-pares po sila ng account, pero iba't iba lang yung way on how they were able to share it. Kasi iba't iba tayong perspective and views. Like for example, ako, si Gian, at si JV, sama-sama kami umate ng youth camp, pero we have different expression and impression na how we will share kung ano experience namin. Pero iisa lang yung heart ng account na yun. This one, it's all about kung paano kinaom ni Jesus yung storm. Now, the one thing that I really want to convey to everyone, if you're gonna try to look at the different Bibles, like Matthew, Mark, Luke, marami po dyan mga synoptic stories. Na pare-pareha sila ng stories, pero iba't iba lang yung puso kung paano sinulat dahil meron siyang kinoconvey na message and all depende sa personality nung nag, nag, nagsulat. Now, the story it's all about Jesus and His disciples. It says here in Luke chapter 28, 22, sabi niya dito, one day, he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out. This is the time wherein Jesus was in Gennariset. So ito yung time nila wherein they really want to go to the other side. The very command of Jesus to the disciples is for you to go to, the, to, to go to the other side or go across to the other side. If you want to, to see kung ano po yung sinasabi to do, sinasabi ni Jesus dito at that time, ito po yung itsura niyan. So from point A to point B, we're in, nandun po sila sa Sea of Galilee, ang mangyayari from Gennarset, pupunta po sila sa kabilang side ng lake. And sinasabi dito, yung lake daw, there's about 21 kilometer long from north to south. And at the same time, over 200 meters or 70 feet below sea level. So meaning, mahaba-habang lakbayin to. Hindi to just an ordinary uh, way on how they will sail, sail. Pero the good thing about it, karamihan ng kasama ni Jesus, there o, karamihan ng kasama ni Jesus, fishermen. So meaning, familiar na sila sa place, alam nila kung paano gagawin, at paano rin sila pupunta dun sa other side. Pero to be honest, from point A to point B, meron tayong tinatawag na waiting time. This is gonna wait. Hanggang makarating ka sa kabilang uh, panig ng lake. How many of you here, you love to travel? Wala. Sino dito mahilig mag-travel? Taas ang kamay. Yung magta-travel ka sa kapitbahay mo, yaw, yeah, mag-ganon. Tapos mangingi ka ng ulam. No. Mahilig tayo mag-travel. And isa sa pinakaayaw natin, yung nauubos yung, at nakukonsume yung time natin na nakaupo lang tayo sa bus. From one point to another. O kaya kung lilipad tayo, uh, alam mo yun, from terminal, na delay ka ng two hours, na delay ka ng three hours, na delay ka next year na. So ayaw natin ng waiting time. Ang daming nangyayari, to be honest, sa mga kinakatakutan ko, 
Ay, wag na nga lang kwento, baka ma, 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 ano pa ako. Hindi, isa sa mga katakutan ko, yung waiting time na hindi ka pa nakakarating doon sa pupuntahan mo, kung ano yung pwedeng mangyari within that uh, time frame na meron. Kung two hours yung biyahe mo, ano kaya yung pwede mo mangyari, ano kaya yung mga pwede mangyari sa two hours na biyahe na yon? Pwede makatulog ka? Pwede may makilala ka? Yun? Pwede uh, magbasa-basa ka lang? Or pwede magmuni-muni ka sa mga nangyari sa buhay mo? At ang pinakaayaw natin, pwede meron maging disgrasya. Every time naaalis kami, magbabiyahe kami, I always ask God, Lord, give your traveling mercy to all of us. Praying for the, 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 the car the, na walang magiging mechanical error. Because naka ang, ang hassle kasi kapag pupunta kayo sa sambagay, tas may nangyari. Isa sa pinakamahirap ko na experience, when we were in Baguio, tapos papunta kami, ano, pauwi na kami ng uh, Mandaluyong. So, nung pababa na kami, it just so happened, yung aircon tumatagas. Tapos yung evaporator tumatagas. So, kailangan namin mag-stop every 10 kilometers para magdagdag ng tubig. Kundi, mag-overheat kami. Try to imagine with us, after 30 kilometers na trial and error, sumuko na kami ang nangyari, nagpahatak na talaga kami. Kasi sobrang hirap. Imagine, ang ganda-ganda ng biyahe namin, okay yung nangyari sa Baguio, pero pagbalik, ang daming nangyari. Have you ever experienced that? May mga bagay sa buhay mo, excited ka mag-travel, pero along the way, na, na, na platan ka, tas ikaw lang mag-isa, tas aaten ka pa ng kasal. Ang matindi doon, ikaw pa yung mag-officiate. <laughs> o kaya, babiyahe ka, imimit mo yung minamahal mo, eto yung moment na mag-propropose ka, tapos na iwan mo pala yung sing-sing. Lahat na nang makakalimutan. Hassle. The reason why I'm saying that is because something happened doon po sa trip nila. So, ano yung nangyari? Ito po yung nangyari. It says here, And as they sailed, he fell asleep. Ibig sabihin, sabi ni Jesus, let's go to the other side, pero pagsakay ni Jesus, abay, chill lang si Jesus, natulog. Okay? May kakilala ba kayo masandal, tulog? Oh, yung mga natutulog dyan, nasandal na kayo. Okay? And sabi niya, and a wind storm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in danger. So what had happened, according to the scholar, when they were in the middle of the lake? Ito po yung nangyari. Nangyari is nagkaroon ng wind storm. Came down. So paano nagkaroon ng wind storm? Ano nangyayari po kasi, familiar din yung mga fishermen at that time, na kapag yung cool water from the mountain, tapos yung hot water na meron sa, sa lake, pag nagsama sila, nagkikreate ng squall. So nagkikreate po siya ng matinding wind, nagkikreate din po siya ng rain. At doon nangyari yung tinatawag natin yung wind storm. And yung wind storm na to, it's like an earthquake. Sabi dito, pag... pag uh, King James ang ginamit mo, tempest. Ibig sabihin nito, it's like an earthquake. Ganun katindi yung shaking. And not only that, scientifically speaking, sobrang matataas talaga yung squall. Alam ko mahilig tayo sa waves. Like for example, sa pool. O kaya punta ka sa, sa, sa paborito mong kung saan ka nagsasurfing. Paborito natin yung sasabay tayo sa wave. Pero this time, it's totally different. Matiting, matitinding squal to, matataas na squal to. At sinabi dito, they are in danger. Try to imagine with me. If you know someone na fisherman, alam nila kung kailan merong pahamak at alam nila kung kailan sila hindi mapapahamak. Titingnan lang nila kung ano itsura ng, ng, uh, ng dagat, yung alon ng dagat, at titingnan lang nila kung ano yung uh, kung saan papunta yung wind, alam na nila kung meron pahamak. But this time, biglaan po to. So the condition was they are in great danger. Have you ever experienced 
a moment in your life that you were that you were in a great danger. Every time na makikita mo yung sarili mo that you are in great danger, isa sa mga mababa, mararamdaman mo, you will be overwhelmed. You're gonna be overwhelmed. Oh, bakit to nangyari? Paano to nangyari? And you're gonna be swamped with a condition. To the point, it's gonna be hard for you to breathe because everything is, feels like it's tossing around. And not only that, you can be anxious. At yung pinakamahirap, yung magiging peaceless ka na. Isa po sa pinakapaborito nating pinagpeprayan, Lord, give me peace. Kung binibenta lang sa mercury drug, mercury drug ang peace, eto na yung top one na drug na pwede nating bilhin. Pero hindi na bibili. Most especially when you face a very dangerous situation in life. Have you ever had that moment na feeling mo sobrang matindi na nangyayari sa buhay mo to the point na giging fearful ka na rin? Fearful ka na because you don't know what's gonna happen. For them, the disciple, it was a squall. Ang tindi ng squall na to. Ang tindi ng storm na to to the point that they can't even manage it. Imagine, fishermen, sanay sila sa laot, familiar place, pero lahat yun naramdaman nila. How about you? What storm are you facing right now? Ano ba yung storm na face mo right now? Na sinasabi mo sa sarili mo, Lord, pwede mo bang patigilan na tong ulan na to? Lord, pwede mo bang patigilan na tong storm na to? Lord, hindi ko na kaya tong storm na to. And at the same time, let me ask this. What do you do in the midst of life's uncontrollable storm? Anong gagawin mo kapag uncontrollable na tong storm na to? Kahit gano ka kayaman, kahit gano ka kakilala or ka-famous, pero pag tumama ang storm sa buhay mo, kamusta ka kapatid? Anong gagawin mo? Paano mo face yung storm sa buhay mo? Marami tayong sitwasyon sa buhay. Isa sa mga sitwasyon na parating hirap na hirap tayo in terms of finances. Magkakatapusan na naman po, nandiyan na si Judith. Kakatok na naman sila. Si credit card, tatawag na naman sa'yo. Pag nakita mo number lang yung tumatawag sa hindi mo nasasagutin kasi nagpapanik attack ka na. Tapos nanginginig ka na. O kaya pag dumating na yung mga bills na hindi mo maintindihan kasi mag enrollment na naman. Feeling mo, ayun na yung moment ng buhay mo na everything will stop because you are in danger. Or maybe you are in a position right now we're in ang storm mo is your family. Parang everyday na lang, estudyante ka, uuwi ka sa bahay mo, yung bahay mo parang circus. Lumilipad yung plato sa kaliwa, lumilipad kutsara sa kaliwa, lumilipad yung, huwag naman kutsilyo. So it's like a circus. Or maybe, you're a businessman. You tried everything, even lato-lato. Nag- at even ginawa mo na lahat-lahat, naggento-gento ka pa, naging ganyan ka naman. What storm are you facing right now? And what do you do in the midst of life uncontrollable storm? Na nagkukos sa'yo ng anxiety, nagkukos sa'yo ng fear, at nagkukos sa'yo to be paralyzed. If there's one thing that I would like to share to everyone, I want you to lean on Jesus. Nothing else, nothing more. Napaka-simple, no? 
Pastor, yan lang yung pipreach mo, lean on Jesus. Wait lang, kapatid. Napaka-simple sabihin, pero napakahirap gawin. Because every time you lean on Jesus, I want you to understand it's all about allowing Jesus to remind you who He is and what He promises. It's so easy for us to say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I obey you. Pero when we are in great danger, sometimes we tend to forget who Jesus is. Madalas nga prayer natin, Lord, patayin mo na ako. Lord, kunin mo na ako. Lord, pagod na ako. Lord, ayoko na. Lord, wala pa rin siya. What do you mean by that? Ibig sabihin nito, there are three things in the story that we, I, really want to share with you in terms of leaning on Jesus. Ito yung mga things na dapat natin panghawakan every time we will lean on Jesus. The first thing that we want to understand is that the term presence of Jesus. It says here, in this verse, one day, he got into a boat with his disciples. And he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. If you will try to look at it, at the very onset, when Jesus was talking to his, disciple, to his disciples, he said, let us go. I want to put an emphasis, let us Meaning, Jesus is including yung sarili niya. Hindi niya sinabi, I want you to go there. He promised, let us go. I'm gonna be with you. And the term, let us go, is something like we need to understand the God that we are serving is an omnipresent God. He is Emmanuel. He is with us. Si Lloyd, hindi namimili ng circumstances mo, nandun lang siya. Because He's omnipresent. Meaning, in every situation you are facing right now, He is there. Presensya ng Panginoon. Pero kadalasan kasi, nakakalimutan natin kasama natin si Lord. Paano natin nakakalimutan? Simple lang. Pag nasa church tayo, napaka-holy natin. Hi, hi Pastor. Hello po. Hi. Dito po, dito po. Paglabas dito, <laughs> Kasi dito, nandito yung presence ni Lord eh. Paglabas, wala na yung presence ni Lord. Tingnan sa tabi mo. Sabi mo sa hindi ikaw yon, hindi ikaw yon. He said, let let us go. Kasama natin si Lord dito. Kaya feeling mo, pag masaya, Lord, kasama kita dito, galing-galing ko. Ikaw na naman. Sabi ko, sige, okay lang ko na. Lord, kasama ka dito. Grabe, all glory to you and all honor for me. Ikaw na naman. Tapos pag problema na, Lord, ba't mo ko iniwan? Kala ko ba mahal mo ko? Ito na yung drama-rama sa hapon. Tinalo mo pa ang Korean novela. Why? Kasi nakalimutan natin yung command ni Lord I'm gonna be with you. Try to imagine with me. When was the last time you asked this question to Lord? Lord, parang hindi kita maramdaman. Lord, parang hindi mo naririnig yung mga prayers ko. Lord, parang ang layo-layo mo. Ang tanong, si Lord ba lumalayo o ikaw lumalayo? At hindi lang yun. You know what? Di ba sinabi sa story, pag sakay ni Jesus doon sa boat, natulog na siya. So now, the command of Jesus let us go there, then when they experience that great squall or storm, sabi niya dito, and they went and woke him saying, Master, Master, you are perishing. We are perishing. Sabi niya dito, they went. The moment that they can't do anything, uncontrollable situation, that is the only time they went to Jesus. 
Because they can't do anything about it. You're fighting against nature. You're fighting against the uncontrollable situation in, your, in, in their lives. Pero the good thing about it, even natutulog si Jesus, they went to Jesus. And they asked something. Sabi na dito, Master, Master, we are perishing. In other translation, we are dying. Lord, mamamatay na ako. Mamamatay na tayo. Hindi mo ba naiintindihan yun ang nangyayari? Sounds familiar. Tama ba ako? Kaya huwag mo sabihin, sikapin mo, pilitin mo, di ba yan ang iyong puso, tanging ikaw. Ang susundon. Anong sa iyong bukas? Di ba? Huwag mo sanang akalain, natutulog pa ang Diyos. Ang buhay ko. Ay, ang sunod. Ay mayroong halaga sa Kanya. Huwag mong kalimutan may halaga, si Lord. may halaga yung buhay mo kay Lord. Kasi parati mo naisip na natutulog ba ang Diyos? Nandun ka na lang eh, hindi ka nakakaalis doon. Natutulog ba ang Diyos? Natutulog ba ang Diyos? Natutulog. Paulit-ulit na lang. Huwag mong kalimutan Sabi nga ni Gary v, ang buhay mo ay mayroong halaga. Huwag kang tumingin sa katabi sa kanya. <laughs> iba kasi tumitingin eh, iniiba yung context eh. Ang buhay mo ay mayroong... <laughs> Guys, huwag... <laughs> Natapot din ako sa... <laughs> Remember, kahit tulog po si Jesus, alam niya nangyayari. Omnipresent nga siya eh. That's why, every time you face trials or you are in great danger, wag mong isipin na tutulog ang Diyos rather than call on Him because He is aware of our storm. Alam niya yung storm na pinagdadaanan mo, kapatid. Alam niya anong ilang beses ka umiiyak. Kahit minsan pinaraktis mo pa, kaliwa bang unang tutulo o kanan. Kapatid, call on Him. He is aware of our storm. And at the same time, do not forget He is with you. The presence of Jesus. And not only the presence of Jesus, but I want you to understand the peace of Jesus. It says here in verse 8, 24b, and he, he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and he, they ceased, and there was a calm. When Jesus woke up, the only thing he did was to cease and even rebuke the main reason why they're panicking, the main reason why they're anxious, the main reason why they have, why they experience fear in their hearts. Sabi niya dito, he rebuked the wind. Bakit ba sila natakot? Kasi dahil sa wind na yan. Sa storm na yan. Pero what he did, he rebuked that. And the word rebuke, ibig sabihin po niya to, is epitemo. Ep- yan yung ibig sabihin niyan, yung Greek. Pero ang pinaka-meaning niya, to speak seriously, one in order to prevent an action or bring one to an end. So meaning, when Jesus rebuked the wind, he's putting the wind to an end. He's putting that storm to an end. In the same way on how Jesus rebuked the disciple is the same meaning on, how, on, on what, 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 what the verse is saying. 
Kung paano kinokorek ni Jesus yung mga disciples, is the same meaning kung paano niya nirebuke itong mga taong to. It's the same meaning din kung paano niya nirebuke yung mga demons, ganun din yung way kung paano niya nirebuke etong tinatawag nating wind. In the same way kung paano niya nirebuke yung unclean spirit, ganun din in the same way in how he rebuke yung mga sakit. So meaning, Every time you go to Jesus and every time you allow God to move in and through you, God is willing to respond on your given situation or your great or your difficult situation and He is willing to rebuke it. But sometimes, we're not allowing God. Instead of rebuking it, what we're doing, ang ginagawa po natin, tumatambay tayo doon. Why you? Bakit natin tinatambayan? Kasi ayaw po natin mismo umalis sa sitwasyon na yun. Dahil we're trying to forget every promise Jesus made for all of us. He said, for the context of the disciple, let us go to the other side. They forgot that. Nakalimutan nila si Jesus nagsabi pupunta sa kabila. Nagkaroon lang ng squall nagpanik na sila at natakot na sila at nagkaroon na sila ng fear dahil sa matinding sitwasyon. Now, kailangan nila ng peace dahil sa napakatinding sitwasyon nila, they are in great danger. To be honest, every time we can catch ourselves in a difficult situation or uh, great uh, great danger, isa po talaga sa pinakamahirap talaga is peace. Hindi po siya nakikuha sa peace be with you. O hindi siya nakakuha sa panunod ng Netflix. Marami, marami tayong different ways on how we can escape dun sa given situation. Yung iba dito, sino dito mag-agree sa akin? Kapag tensionado ka, kapag stress ka, kapag anxious ka, kapag meron kang uh, uh, na-experience na something na mental, ang ginagawa mo, kumakain ka na madami. Sino dito? Yung katulad ko. Stress eater ka. Wala. Ang pangit yung namang kabanding. <laughs> Wala. Sino dito? Yung iba, may kakilala ko, ang ginagawa nila, nagro-road trip sila. Ayan, may mga nagro-road trip dito. Kasi gusto lang nila makakita ng tanawin na forever nakaganyan lang sila. Yan. Sino naman dito, gusto mo kasama yung barkada mo? Ayan. Yung tipong feeling mo, gusto mo lang tumawa. At gusto mo lang na mayroong magsiselfie party with you. O sino naman dito, para matanggal yung stress mo, alam mo nang paborito mo, yung may kabayo. Red horse. Brum! Yung nakangiti o hindi. Iba doon, alak. That's reality. Pero, I'm telling you, kahit lumaklak ka ng sampung kilo, ay hindi pala kinikilo yon. kahit lumaklak ka ng ilang stallion ng alak, sasakit lang ulo mo, mawawala, hindi mawawala problema mo. Kahit makipagbanding ka sa friends mo, patawanin ka, malakak ka, mautot ka na <laughs> sa kakatawa, wala pa rin mangyayari. Kahit gaano mong kadaming kinain, baka may impatso ka pa. Because at the end of the day, you cannot get peace right then and there. You can't. But the good thing about this in this passage, the very condition, which is the great danger where yung disciples na may finiface, yung finiface nila, is the same thing na ginawa ni Lord na tanggalin. Nirebuke niya kakagad. Nirebuke niya kung ano yung root, hindi lang surface. Kasi lahat ng mga ginagawa natin in order for us to find peace is just a surface. Tinatanggal lang natin, kung baga pag nagtanim tayo, pinuputol lang natin yung mga damo, pinuputol mo lang, pero yung root hindi natatanggal. Pero kapag kay Jesus, kapag nag-react siya at nag siya, for sure, kung ano yung sitwasyon na pinag, pinag, i- iiyak-iyak mo dyan, yun mismo ang tatanggalin ni Jesus. Ia-approve niya yun. 
That's why it was stated there, right after that, meron silang na-experience na calmness. Nang water, ng wind, and most especially, na calm yung heart nila. Why? Because they went to Jesus and they asked for help. I want you to understand my prayer is that you will trust that Jesus will deliver us through the storm. Wag ka nang kumantang, I can make it through the rain. I can stand up once again. Si Jesus lang kailangan natin. Lumapit tayo kay Jesus. And the last thing that I really want to share is the power of Jesus. It says here, he said to them, where is your faith? And they were afraid and they marveled, saying to one another. Sabi niya dito, right after they witnessed on how Jesus rebuked the wind, the storm, kinausap sila ni Jesus, and this is the question of Jesus, where is your faith? The reason why Jesus asked this question is because those disciples na kasama ni Jesus, they were with Jesus for almost how many, how many days already. They were able to experience different miracles. They were able to experience personal miracles. They were able to experience how Jesus was t- how Jesus taught o- yung mga taong pumafalo sa kanya at na-experience na nila kung gaano kagaling si Lord. Pero in this very condition, nag-doubt sila and in this very condition, sobrang fearful sila at nakalimutan nila na nandun si Jesus. Try to imagine with me. It's the same thing that has happened to all of us. Where is your faith? Every time na meron tayong trials in life, every time na we are in great danger, nasan po yung faith natin kapatid? Pero to be honest, ang daling sabihin. I have faith. Pero kapag tinitignan mo yung sitwasyon mo, kung may faith ka, ang tanong, nasishaken ka ba? Nagra-run away ka ba kay Lord? O dahil sa sitwasyon mo, ang perspective mo, rather than to dwell on the situation, you are excited that this situation will turn to a testimony. Kapatid, it's a matter of perspective. Alam ko mahirap. Hindi ko man naiintindihan yung sitwasyon mo, pero isa lang alam ko, naiintindihan ng Panginoon ang sitwasyon mo at hindi ka niya iiwan. At yung tanong na where is your faith is the same question on my own version. Ikaw yata ang natulog. Ikaw yata ang nakalimot. Ikaw yata ang umiwan. Kasi ako, nandyan lang ako. Where is your faith? I want you to go back to your drawing board. When we, start, when we started this year, 2023, nagkaroon tayong faith goals. When we had our prayer and fasting, Start of this year in, in, in uh, mid-year, we were so pumped up, to be honest. Sobrang pumped up tayo. Oh, Lord, I believe it, I believe. Naman yung nangyayari to, lahat na to. Ang tanong doon, kailan mo binalikan yung faith goals mo? Nasilip mo ba ulit yung mga sinulat mo? Baka naman ang dami ng sinagot ni Lord. Pero dahil sa isang sitwasyon na to, nakalimutan mo na nawala yung faith mo. Hindi na nagkasa sa manual yung mga faith calls mo, kumuha na ng yellow paper pa, sinulat mo doon, at grabe, sobrang in, in faith na in faith ka. Pero nung nagkaroon ka ng sitwasyon, ni hindi mo matignan yung faith calls mo. Go back to your drawing board and see how faithful our God is even sometimes we are so faithless. At ang tahimik niyo po. 
At hindi po natapos yun. Where is your faith? And finally, it says there, who then is this that he commands even winds and water and they obey him? Try to imagine with me. Jesus performed another miracle. A supernatural miracle, miracle wherein he rebuked the windstorm. Pero, for the past how many days, months, that they are with Jesus, the question that they ask to Jesus, who is this? Who is this man? Who is this person? Who is this God? Who is this Jesus? Maybe you are in a position right now that you are, st- you are also questioning God. Lord, who are you? If you are through, why this thing's not happening? If you are through, why my business is not progressing? If you are through, why my family is not yet restored? If you are true, bakit hindi pa rin ako nagkakaanak ngayon? Kung, to, ba, kung totoo ka, Panginoon, bakit until now may mental illness pa rin ako? Marami po tayong pwedeng itanong kay God. But the question is, every time you ask that question, will you still hold on that Jesus were able to perform miracles? Kasi pag nadwell ka na lang sa question na who are you at kinalimutan mo yung ibang ginawa niya sa buhay mo, mas stuck ka na doon. Mahihirapan ka nang maintindihan pa kung ano pa yung mga bagay na miracles na pwedeng gawin ng Panginoon sa iyo. Kaya sinabi niya, who then is this? Remember, when you are in the presence of God and you allow Him to move in and through you, He is willing to give you the peace that you are asking for. And He is not just willing to give you the peace that He is asking for, and He is so willing to prove yung sarili niya again and again and again and again and again that He is powerful. Even how many times you doubt the God that we are serving is still a powerful God and willing to do miracles in you. That is the nature of who, who our God is. Eh? But the question is, will you be stuck on that question, Sino ka Lord, or will you allow Him to move in and through you so that you can experience the miracle that God has for you? Because Jesus has the power to deliver us from the storm of everyday life. Kahit maliit na bagay yan, kayang i-prove ni Lord kung sino siya. Kahit malaking bagay yan, kayang i-prove ni Lord kung sino siya. Ang tanong noon, ang tanong doon, where is your faith? Where is your faith? And as I end, kung i-encapsulate natin lahat ng sinabi ko, I really want you to lean on Jesus. Because as you lean on Jesus, you will experience His presence, you will experience His peace, and you will experience His power. And you will allow Jesus to remind you of who He is and what He has promised for all of us. Remember, He said, In this passage, Luke chapter 8, verse 22. One day, he got into a boat with his disciples and he said, let us go, go across to the other side. In the following verse, in verse 26 to 27, ito po yung nangyari. After all the things that had happened in the middle of the lake, it says there, then they sailed to the country of the Ginarsen, which is opposite Galilee, when Jesus had stepped out on the land, there met 
him a man from the city who had demons. Sabi niya dito, let us go across to the other side. And in verse 26, they were able to go to the other side. Because that's the promise of God. At hindi lang yon. sinabi dito, si Jesus was able to step out on the land. Meaning, every time Jesus will command something, God is also telling us, do not forget His presence. He is with you. Do not forget that God can give you peace na makakarating ka dun sa pupuntahan mo. At sinasabi rin sa iyo ni Lord na meron siyang power para i-fulfill niya yung pupuntahan mo. Tulad ng mga disciples na to. Yes, they experienced storm, but God proved it anyway that He is a powerful God. And as I end, I want you to know that we can stay calm and be in faith whenever we encounter a storm in life for Jesus' presence, peace, and presence, peace, and power is with us every day. Madali pong sabihin, pero mahirap i-appropriate. Pero ini-encourage ko po kayong lahat, kapag si Jesus ang nag-command sa'yo at alam mong si Lord to, may peace yan. Kapag si Jesus ang nag-command sa'yo at si Jesus ang nagsabi sa'yo, mangyayari yan. Why? Because He even promised that He will die on that cross for atonement of our sins. And He fulfilled it. We are holy and righteous in the eyes of God because Jesus died on that cross because He promised He will do it for you and I. And at the same time, He promised the victory is ours. We are not victims. We are all victors. Can I ask everyone to stand up? I want to take this time to pray for people. I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads. Maybe some of you here, you know and you very well know that you are at the edge of your life. You feel like you are in great danger. Yung tipong, Lord, wala na. Hirap na ako. Emosyon ko, nag-overflow na, nagpapanic attack na ako, my mind is everywhere, I don't have peace, and I don't even have security in my life. If you are here, I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads. If you are here, you're saying, Lord, I want to surrender this to you. Give up ako, Panginoon. And you're the only thing, or you're the only God whom I believe na pwedeng makatulong sa akin. And you want to repent as well. Kasi alam mo, ikaw yung umiwan kay Lord in this situation. I want you to close your eyes and bow your head. If that is you, you want to repent, and you want the peace of God to be upon you, I would like you to raise your hand and let me pray for you. Just raise your hand. God sees the heart. God sees the hand. God sees the hand. God sees the hand. Wow. There's a lot. Raise it higher. It's a sign of surrender. Lord, you see the hand of these people. I pray, Lord, that even right now, you will touch their hearts. I pray that you will just give them the confidence that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Thank you, God, because I know that even right now, you're giving them the peace of heart and the peace of mind, that they can hold on to every promise that you've deposited in their lives, Lord. Even nasa edge na sila ng buhay nila, 
almost want to give up. Lord, naniniwala ako na you can breathe new life to them. Naniniwala ako na kaya niyo pong paltan yung perspective nila and start a new and fresh life again. Maraming maraming pong salamat. For I know that you will bless them. You may put down your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And also, I just want to pray for a very specific uh, people. If you are here, ikaw yung taong, alam mo, depressed na depressed ka na. There's depression in you. It could be clinical or it could be something that nagbe-burst out yung emotion mo. And nagiging anxious ka na, hindi mo na, napaparalyze ka na, you don't know what to do. To the point that even believing in God is really hard for you to do. Yung tipo, ang ganda naman nangyayari sa buhay mo, pero nahihirapan ka pa rin. O kaya kabalita rin, sobrang nahihirapan ka dahil hindi maganda yung nangyayari sa buhay mo because you are in depression. And you know in yourself na hindi mo natanin kaya. I want you to close your eyes, bow your head. If you are here, no looking around, alam mo, depressed ka na, may depression ka, and you want to surrender it to God. Lord, I can't, but I know you can. If that is you, I want you to raise your hand, and I'm gonna pray for you. God sees that hand. God sees that hand. I know there's more. God sees that hand. Thank you, Jesus. God sees that hand. God sees that hand. Lord, you see the hand of these people acknowledging na meron po sila nararamdaman. Na hindi nila maintindihan. It could be hormones. It could be something uh, clinical. It could be something very emotional, Lord. Na gulo-gulo ang utak nila, Panginoon. Lord, thank you because you are the God of peace. And you are the God who can renew our minds, Lord. Lord, my prayer is that you will touch their heart, that you will touch their mind. I pray it will be aligned with yours, God. Lord, thank you because nothing is impossible with you. We rebuke that depression in the mighty name of Jesus. We, re- we-, we rebuke that anxiety in the mighty name of Jesus. We rebuke that confusion in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, thank you because there's healing in your name, there's power in your name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, let them experience freedom right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Set them free in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, even it seems so impossible, in you, everything is possible. Maraming maraming po salamat. Bless them. In Jesus' name. Look up here as we end. Laban po. Laban tayo. Sabi mo sa akin mo, laban tayo. Walang bibitaw. Come on now. Walang bibitaw. Bakit tayo hindi bibitaw? Kasi kahit kailanman, di tayo binitawan ng Panginoon. Can I ask everyone to raise your hand? Let me just take this time to pray a prayer blessing to everyone. Lord, thank you. Kasi alam namin, Panginoon, kahit ano hamon ng buhay, parati ka nandyan. Kahit isang beses, Panginoon, turuan mo kami hindi pumasok sa isip at puso namin, Lord, na wala ka. Lord, teach us to hold on to your word and teach us even to declare that you are mighty to save. Teach us to declare that you are powerful over our situation. Teach us to declare that you are victorious in everything that is happening in our life. And teach us to declare as well that we are victors. Hindi po kami talunan, hindi po kami basura, kundi we are blessed and we are highly favored in you, God. Lord, thank you. May you bless everyone. And may you still in our hearts that you're living and alive and active in our hearts, God. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen and Amen and Amen. Maraming maraming pong salamat for attending. If you need prayers, our missionaries, pastors, and leaders will be here in front. We're willing to pray for you. God bless everyone.